In this video, uh, we want to look at this 12th homework exercise. It's about solving rational equations and those equations that happen to be quadratic in nature. So we still need to get x by itself, but x ends up being in these weird situations. So we have to take care of that. So in this first one, you see that you have a bunch of x's in these denominators. So we've got to clear out those denominators. Now, it's all about finding the LCD, and the LCD is all about factors x squared plus 5x plus 6 factors as x plus 2x plus 3. Now we need to make sure that everybody has the same denominator. And so you see here that this denominator is missing the factor x plus 3. So we put that in both the numerator and denominator. This guy is missing the factor x plus 2. So that goes in both the numerator and denominator as well. So now that everybody has the same denominator, we get to cross these guys out. They don't really matter anymore as long as they are all the same and you have an equation. Look what you have left. When I distribute, I have x squared plus 3x. Here I would have plus 3x plus 6, and this is equal to 13. This equation is quadratic. So we need to move the 13 over here as a negative 13 and try to solve this guy. Let's see what we have. That's x squared plus 6x minus 7 is equal to 0. Now the first thing we would really like to try to do here is to see if this factors. And this guy factors very nicely. He factors as x plus 7 times x minus 1. And when I finish solving this, I end up with x equals negative 7 or x equals positive 1. Now remember with these rational equations, you have to watch out for restricted values. What are those values that make the denominator equal 0? Well, x plus 2 equals 0 when x is negative 2. x plus 3 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 3. So as long as I don't have a solution that's a restricted value, as long as I've done everything correctly, these guys should work out very nicely for me. All right, so let's check this next problem, number two. Number two has a bunch of denominators, so let's see how to factor each of these. This first guy factors as x plus 1, x minus 1. The guy here in the middle is x plus 3, x plus 1. And this guy over here is x plus 3 x minus 1. Your job here is to put in those missing factors so that everybody is the exact same thing. So this guy is missing the x plus 3 that everybody else has. So put that in the numerator and denominator. This guy is missing the factor of x minus 1. And this guy is missing the factor of x plus 1. Since everybody has the same denominator now, we just need to worry about those numerators. So distribute correctly here. So that's 3x plus 9 plus, make sure you watch your signs, it's 2x minus 2 is equal to x plus 1. Now what we see here is not an equation that's quadratic because there are no squares. It's just a nice linear equation. Combine like terms just to clean it up a little bit. It's 5x plus 7 equals x plus 1. If I move the x to the left and 7 to the right, so that's a negative 7. This is a negative x. We end up with 4x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by 4 and simplify. x equals negative 3 halves. If you check the restricted values that we had in this problem, you couldn't have x equal to negative 1, positive 1, or negative 3. Now we, don't, we didn't have that or any of those as a solution, so this guy should be OK. So just make sure you watch your signs, distribute correctly, and you'll be right as rain. 
So these are rational equations, those that contain fractions. Now let's look at number three. Three and four are what we call equations that are quadratic in nature. Uh, remember, quadratic in nature means they can be written in this form. a u squared plus b u plus c is equal to zero, where u can be any variable expression. Now, this guy right here, watch what happens if I move that 63 over to the left. This guy is a trinomial, and we factor trinomials. Notice that this is a constant, and this guy right here is, when you square it, that guy. And that's the pattern that we see here with things that are quadratic in nature. Now, later on I'm going to do u substitution, but right now we can just factor this guy. x to the fourth, I would expect to break down nicely and evenly as x squared and x squared. Factors of 63 that subtract to give you 2 would be 9 and 7. Since you need a positive 2, plus 9 and a minus 7. Now watch what happens with the rest of this. This is factored, and it's equal to 0, so we can still use the 0 factor theorem. So x squared plus 9 is equal to 0, or x squared minus 7 is equal to 0. These guys right here are both equations where you would use the square root property. So x squared is equal to negative 9. Applying the square root property means x is equal to plus or minus 3i. And over here, x squared is equal to 7. Square root property with the plus or minus, don't forget that. And x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. There's nothing else you can do there. Now if you look at the original problem, it says x to the fourth. That means I expect to have four solutions. One, two, three, four. If I were to write out all of my solutions, we have the square root of 7, negative the square root of 7, 3i, and negative 3i. Those are your four different solutions. Now you can write this, but if you're in my class, this is good enough for me. If you're doing something on my math lab, make sure you understand and read how they want you to give the answer. Now this next problem is a little bit more difficult. You see that you have the same expression in each of these. Now we're going to do what's called a u-substitution, so check this out. I'm going to let u equal this complicated looking expression, which is 2 over x plus 1. When I do that, this guy right here becomes u squared minus 7. This guy is now u plus 10 is equal to 0. So when I make that substitution, I end up with an equation that's a lot easier to work with. And this substitution of u being equal to 2x plus 1 is going to get used later on in this problem. But right now we have a nice trinomial that factors. This guy factors as u minus 5 times u minus 2. So using that zero factor theorem, u equals 5, or u equals 2. But see, we're not done, though. That's just part of it. Remember how u represented something else? u is 2 over x plus 1. So now we make this little conversion. So 2 over x plus 1 is equal to 5. Now, we need to solve this equation because the, the goal here was to get x by itself. That was the original variable. If I make this over 1, I create a proportion, and I know that cross products are equal. So that means that 2 times 1, or 2, equals the other cross product, 
5 times x plus 1, so that's 5x plus 5. Solving for x means I subtract the 5 to get negative 3, and then I would divide by 5. So that's what x is equal to, negative 3 fifths. Over here, I do the same thing. 2 over x plus 1 is equal to 2, and that's going to be over 1. When I do the cross products, 2 times 1 is 2. Over here, that's 2x plus 2. If I subtract the 2, that gives me 0. 0 divided by 2 is going to be x. Because I would subtract the 2 and then divide by 2. But you're not going to leave this as an answer. Because really, that's just x is equal to 0. Now, in the original problem, if you look up here, this was my denominator, x plus 1, so x could never equal negative 1. Well, I don't have that, so these answers appear to be good, as long as I've done everything well up to that point. So in this last problem, we made a little substitution. When I made the substitution, it took this ugly-looking equation, and it made it something that was easy to work with. We were able to factor it, set each factor equal to 0, but then we did the substitution going backwards. So instead of writing u, I write what it represented, which was 2 over x plus 1. These smaller equations I could then solve to get my answers negative 3 fifths and 0.